Hello friends, welcome back for part two of our walkthrough through Oxygen Unoccluded Spaced Out. That's right, rock walkthrough through, that's that's what we call it. We're back with the walkthrough crew again. Let me get rid of all these messages. Let's just kind of get started with the most pressing thing that we need to do here that uh, we could have done in the last video, but you know what, let's just wait a little bit to do it uh, so that it fits better into the structure. <laughs> you could just do this right away if you really wanted to, but we need an oxygen source. Let's just throw down our first one. I'm just gonna use an oxygen diffuser. Um, I would really not recommend the algae terrarium. The sublimation station we'll use later, but right now we're not gonna use it. So all we need to do to get this hooked up is we just need to set up a quick uh, oxygen diffuser, connect it to our power, and call that good. Like we talked about in the last video, mostly what we're trying to do is hit the top and we're pretty much there. So this thick layer of abyss light is not something we'll be able to get through, but this is good to know where the top of the base is because uh, that is gonna be mostly where my duplicates are gonna be living and doing things, is kind of in this area. So I'm just gonna keep, oh, I need to raise the priority of our oxygen diffuser so our duplicates actually go get algae and load this for us. We will get a supplier here in just a second. Um, Actually, this one should probably be more of an operator. So I'm gonna take my fourth duplicate. Let's see what we got here. Cooking and supplying is okay. I'd rather have somebody that's good for, hmm. We will need someone for ranching. Let's just grab Ada for right now. Ada's gonna be our farmer. You can grab these in kind of any order. The ones you're gonna want next are gonna be your farmer, your supplier, and your operator. I'm going to grab the farmer because we will want somebody to be good at farming. Um, and that's going to be one of the things that we do within the scope of this video. So let's make sure we have prioritized Ada correctly. We want her to be on farming and ranching. Now that we have four duplicates, you'll notice that they'll all have their downtime at the same time. Which is not very ideal because I need somebody that's going to come up here and fill up this oxygen diffuser right now. But everybody's asleep. Oh, I don't have a bed for Ada. We should probably make that too. We'll get that in just a sec. You're sleeping on the floor tonight, Ada. Deal with it. All right. So what I want to talk about now is a point where we don't actually have all of them sleeping and doing things at the same time. So let's build out their schedules while they get busy doing some other stuff. Let me give them some things to do here. So we don't have to pause and sit there and do nothing in the meantime. Just going to keep digging this out like that. All right, so let's set up their schedules. I want to have four different schedules. Um, this is so that I have four shifts. My duplicates are all always going to be doing something, so there isn't something languishing in my base when everybody's asleep. So I want to set this up here really quickly. So I'm just going to set it up like this. I'm going to set up three blocks in the day for break time and three blocks in the, in the day for bedtime for each of these schedules, but I want them to offset one another. So... The first three, I'm going to wait to set up these until they uh, are out of those time windows. They're actually almost there, so I'll just waste everyone's time for just a minute until this goes past that block. And okay, we're about good. Okay, there we go. So these ones I want to have in the morning, so I'm just going to call them morning sleepers. That's when they're going to be going to sleep. The next one I'm just going to do right next to it. So these three and these three are going to be for our afternoon sleepers. The rest of these, by the way, I'm going to set to all work. So there we go. The next one's going to be our evening sleepers. So we'll do this for them. Set up the rest of it to be work. Evening sleepers. And the last one are going to be our night sleepers, which is the default. But I'm going to get rid of the bathroom one because we get an extra point of morale. And they will still use the bathroom at those times. So I'm fine with that. Then all I'm going to do is distribute them equally through the different schedules. It doesn't really matter which one is which. Who's suffocating? What's going on here? Oh, you guys are stuck. Nice. Hopefully we'll get them out in time. All right. Harold, Ada, get out of there. Okay, we're good. So, yeah, if I have them all offset as different schedules throughout the day, then uh, what's going to happen is they will make sure that they are keeping everything up here. We'll make sure all this stuff is getting loaded. I could raise the priority on my generator here if we wanted them to generate more power for oxygen and that kind of stuff. But there'll at least always be someone awake to do this. So that is kind of the idea. Um, by the way, if I don't have enough algae, I'm gonna need to go grab some, so we might as well dig some out right here. The other thing that's gonna be good is that if I have facilities that are going to be 
limited based upon how many you can use them at a time. So say like our bathrooms or something like that. I'll only want to make like four toilets instead of 16. So that not everybody can use them at the same time. It's going to take up less space. It'll be a nice uh, advantage for us. Let's keep up on our research, by the way. Just grab the next one down. Again, I'm just grabbing all the blue ones. Not really paying that much attention to what I'm getting now. Because it doesn't really matter yet. Let's auto harvest this. Make sure we dig all this stuff out. Yeah, so we're getting our algae, getting our oxygen up here. The biggest thing that we don't have right now is our food source. And if you just start it up at the top left, the first couple things you're going to get are going to be related to food. So farm tiles are definitely something we want to start setting up here. So I'm going to start mining out all this stuff as much as I can, with obviously being careful to preserve the water pits that are here. I don't want to dig those out yet. So if I dig all the way over and kind of leave the water pits alone, I want to leave a couple of spaces around them just to make sure that no sand falls or it doesn't break through with the fertilizer because the fertilizer tiles are very weak. Once I get to that point, I'm just going to start dropping some farm tiles. And we're going to start off by planting mealwood as our first food source. So I'm going to go into food and our farm tiles and just going to throw down a bunch of them like this. But I'm also going to leave some space here to make sure we have good airflow. So the way that I build is I will want to have each of these sections 26 tiles wide, and that's so that it will make uh, enough room for a lot of different types of room, uh, types of rooms. Um, so if you look at the room overlay here, a lot of them have a max requirement of 96 tiles. One of them that's particularly important is a stable. Um, so I want them to be able to fit in that space, but I also am going to be moving stuff around a lot. So I don't want to commit to one size for one particular thing. I'd rather be able to move stuff back and forth as it suits me for certain phases of the game. So I'm just going to create a layer of farm tiles here. And once my duplicates can get on that, I can also cancel the stuff that isn't important. Um, so the other thing to think about here, and I did mention this in my base game walkthrough, is try to keep your number of projects you have down to a minimum. So that they're focusing on one thing at a time, and ideally the thing that's the most important at that time. If you have a ton of things going on all at once, like if I was like, well, I know I want to dig all this out, so yeah, let's have them do this, and let's have them dig all the way over here, that's going to be a big waste of time, and I don't need to do that right now. What I need right now is food, so I want to focus all my duplicates into getting that food as quickly as possible. The other thing is I want to cook this food that we get, and ideally I would not like to have my duplicates eating food that has not been cooked. Uh, the reason being is the cooked food will either give you some more calories for the food you're already producing, or it will make it last longer. So I definitely want to do those two things if I can. Uh, we're going to need a cook to be able to, to use this, so we could figure out who is the uh, most available for something like that. And the person that's our farmer could probably do double duty for right now, so I have not assigned their skill. I could assign the first skill into cooking just to make sure that we get the food uh, cooked to the way that we want it to, either for those extra calories or for the preservation. Need to hook this up to power. And since we have uh, Ada is prioritized to be doing the farming... Oh, we didn't set it... Oh, yes, we did. Because Ada is going to be prioritizing the farming and ranching, as soon as we plant anything or as soon as we ask things to be planted, uh, Ada is going to run up here and we'll do that first. So this will make sure we get on a renewable source of food as soon as possible. So we're just going to keep digging around here and kind of expanding. Let me do something that I did a lot in my last uh, walkthrough, where if there's not a whole lot to talk about, I'll just kind of skip forward to a different part um, and kind of condense it all down into one video. So let's take a, a small little break here. I'll advance forward to when more of this is fleshed out. Then I'll talk about moving some other stuff up as we create space for it. Okay, advance forward just a little bit. Got most of our food planted. Our electric grill is now hooked up, so let's talk about what we're going to be cooking. Uh, the first thing that you want to set to cook pretty much infinitely is this pickled meal. And now that we're expecting this to be cooked, I want to ban my duplicates from eating the ingredients. So I'm going to go into the consumables, and I'm going to ban them from eating meal lice. Any other raw ingredient that I don't want them to eat right now, I'm also going to ban. So spindly grub fruit, if I find that, um, that can be cooked into something else. I'm going to... Uh, actually, actually, I don't know this. Um, let me check. 
yeah, you can roast it and turn it into something else. So I definitely don't want to let them eat that. Same thing with the bristleberries. I'm going to ban them from that because once we do discover it, uh, that's something that can be cooked into something else too. So anything here, especially just these two that are just one raw ingredient, uh, you can turn them either into something that's going to last longer or something that gives you more uh, calories. So definitely want to make sure that I ban them from eating the ingredients and only let them eat the finished food. This is also a big reason why I really encourage you to dig around the map a lot is because you're going to start getting to this point. Oh, people are idling. You're going to start getting to this point where um, you don't have enough seeds to actually take up all the farm tiles that you get here. And digging into uh, this area is one of the best ways to find these seeds. So that's why I really encourage you to get out there and just continue digging even if there's not. It doesn't really seem like there's a point to do so. Let's take another duplicate. This one, I'm probably going to... Well, we need... The three that we needed next are going to be our farmer, operator, and supplier. So we have someone here that's good at operating. Let's take Catalina. And Catalina will basically be our power source for a little while until we get that replaced with something better. Our outhouses are also getting full, so let's get those up to nine. Just so when it's time for them to be emptied and uh, fixed up, we can get that done. Also, our skills are starting to be populated for our original duplicates, so your skills for them should be fairly obvious. For the builder, I want them to be good at building, so more building. Same thing with digging, same thing with researching. The operator that we just got, uh, we could throw that into operating as well, just so that uh, they're more happy about that. It will start mattering later on when they start operating other things. Uh, you could also put it into carrying and stuff like that, but we don't have a lot of supplying tasks yet. So I'm just going to start them on a path that I'm going to want them in in the long term. Let's also make sure to prioritize Catalina properly, so into operating. So now Catalina should be one of the first people on this. I can probably deprioritize that back down to five because the only person that should be running here to charge it will be Catalina when the time comes. All right, let's talk about one more thing that I want to cover within the scope of this video before we call it good. Um... This stuff that's down here is kind of not really useful uh, being in this position because it's kind of soaking in carbon dioxide. And I want the carbon dioxide to just be sitting at the bottom of my base, but I don't want my duplicates to have to go down here all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start moving everything up more. Um, so I'm going to start putting their beds up a little bit higher. Could put them here too, uh, and just kind of build a floor. Actually, what am I doing? I should really just make this into its own room. Um, because we're not going to be able to dig up much more here anyway. So, uh, I'm going to create a room here, which is just going to be their barracks. And it's just going to contain all their beds. So, I have five duplicates. Sure, that's plenty. And then this room is just going to extend out to about here. Let me cancel this one. Put a door on. There, that'll move those up. And then I want to move my outhouses up too, so those ones I could probably just throw over here for right now. Again, this is all temporary. This will get moved in uh, due time, so we can uh, destroy the ones that they've been using and rebuild the ones that are going to be in a better position for us. Um, I don't remember if I said this already, but the reason I want to be up at the top is because a lot of spaced out is going to involve space travel and kind of going back and forth. So access to the top is way more valuable than access to the bottom, so that's what I would rather do. Okay, let's call that good for right now. Thank you very much for watching. I will come back with another part very soon, as soon as we have some good stuff to talk about. It will probably be around your initial Great Hall, so your duplicates have a place to eat. We can keep their morale up. Um, and I will tell you when to stop taking duplicates, by the way. You don't want to just take them constantly. So once we get our sixth, we will probably pause for a little bit, but we'll get there in the next uh, video or two. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you back with the next part here really soon.